What happens when seven developers create a game without communicating? Often absolutely wild pieces of art. But sometimes it all falls to pieces and the project is a disaster. What will it be this time around? Each developer gets a handful of hours to work on the project, then passes on their progress to the next creator who must expand, transform and improve the game however he likes. So let's get started with developer number one. Hi there, I'm Slowy Muck. I'll be starting this video off, which means I make the foundation everything will be based on. No pressure. If there's one thing I like, it's your mom. But I also like ragdolls. So, I decided to make an active ragdoll. When looking at other examples of active ragdoll controllers, one pattern you can find is that they're all pretty wacky looking. So, what's wackier than a potato? It's just the silliest little things, aren't they? Now, active ragdolls consist out of two things. Active and ragdolls. Wow! So, one easy way to get a ragdoll in Unity is just to go here and put a body parts in there and in these slots. And boom! When doing these things though, you get these character joints which kinda suck. Like a lot. So, I switched them with better joints and gave them muscles with springs. The only problem now is when we try to move it now, it'll just fall over like a small child. So, let's hang it. First time. I added a sphere to which I added an upward force to which the head is connected, keeping the character more balanced. But then I found out there's a built-in component that doesn't involve bug fixing a sphere that's flying all over the place, so I used that instead. Other than a ragdoll, there's not really much in the game yet, so I need to add some stuff that the next dev can use to turn it into a game. So I added rocket launchers that shoot beans with a C because they're like cool like that, you know? I want to make this into a parkour game, because what better character controller can you have for a highly movement and control sensitive game genre than an unstable potato? So I made a simple parkour over a big ocean with huge and dangerous sharks that will kill you if you fall in. Definitely not just a green screen of sharks. But in case the next death doesn't go into the platform direction, which I really hope it doesn't. I also added a mountain to jump from, which can be turned into some kind of mountain jumping game based on the totally real and super cool Olympic sports of mountain jumping. If, however, they don't think of this genius idea, I also added boxes, and whilst it doesn't really compare to throwing boxes in real life, it definitely is still fun. But with that, I should probably get back to my college finals, so I'll hand the camera to the next dev. Before moving on to the second developer, you might be thinking, I wish I could also make video games and bring my imagination to life. Well, lucky you, we've just launched our course, Game Dev Rockets. There, we'll create dozens of different video games, starting with small projects and ending up making an epic FPS which you'll publish and sell on Steam. You'll learn all about game art, programming, using the Unity game engine, marketing, and more. There's a special launch deal with a massive 30% discount for the next 48 hours. There's only 300 spots since we want to take special care of each and every student, so sign up now before it's too late. The link is in the description. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Aaron. I go by Zaba online and I'm making devlogs for my multiplayer mage game. So when I opened this project, I was sort of confused since there wasn't a whole lot of gameplay, just mechanics. First thing I did was redesign the player character. I changed some proportions real quick, moved the eyeballs and added a splash of color. I sort of based the character off the frog since I wanted a tongue grapple mechanic. These were pretty popular a few years ago when the YouTuber Danny released his tutorial. So it wasn't too hard to grab some code for that and throw it in. I felt it plays well into the whole physics movement parkour team. For the hand grabbing, I added on the grapple code to give it more range, and made throwing automatic. Overall, I played it pretty safe since with physics I tend to lose days of time to bugs. I had to drop the active ragdoll since I couldn't see a way to get precise movement from it needed for parkour. Outside of the character controller, I added a simple key which essentially deletes doors, turrets which will stun you and make you drop the key, and bombs to blow up those turrets. For the actual gameplay loop, I used Dan QZQ's online leaderboard and then just slapped that in. Now players are timed and have to compete for fastest level completion, so I guess it's a speedrun game. And then to finish it off with the little time I had left, I made probably the worst level imaginable, but it has tutorials and such, so now I can sleep soundly knowing my gameplay idea is clear. So yeah, that's all I got done. I'm really excited where things will go from here and see the ideas other devs come up with for this game. G'day, I'm Frug. I just want to say first off, Aaron, good job on this frog model. He's looking very handsome. Very, very handsome. 
So first thing I wanted to do immediately was a level and art rehaul. I was liking the character design and the grapple mechanic, but there was a lot of complexity going on and I just wanted to simplify things and give the game like a unified look and feel. So I took these flowers from my game Go Pogo. I also thought that our frog fella should be able to swim, so I added swimming. But yeah, I did some basic level design. I had these little like Japanese Tori structures and I added a big frog here and some flying sky island thingies. But yeah, as you can see, we've got a big world and pond now for this little frog to explore. And I've started this trend of just moving upwards. Reminds me of a certain game that's trending at the moment. But uh... Yeah, you can go up these massive water columns and go into the sky where there's more froggies. I'm hoping the next devs continue the level going upwards and we can climb very high together as, a, as frogs. Yes. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Goodbye. What's up, dude? I am 3Bomb. I am most recently known for ruining Club Penguin. Fired it up and tickled that play button and... Ooh, very serene. Oh my goodness. Look at this guy. After goofing around for a little bit, I started taking note of the things that needed addressing most. Uh, the main thing being sound. I gathered a bunch of sounds from a sound library that I pay for, and I cut them up and blended some things together a bit. And then I also recorded my own sounds for our little frog specimen here. And here they all are. That sure is a lot of sounds. Wow. Now all the sounds are in, we go from this to this. I like it. It's uh, silly, uh, maybe even a little wacky. I perused the game files and I noticed some interesting things like a leaderboard and a uh, big cannon. The direction of the game seemed like an obstacle course traversal kind of thing, so I leaned into that as I fired up Blender and started to make a few models. I modeled some clouds, a giant hand, and a toxic barrel. When I first started playing, I was confused by the pond water respawning me, so that's where these come in. Yeah, the barrels aren't frog scale, uh, the frog is just human scale as a result of exposure to uh, these radioactive barrels. Um, but I think you should be thankful for it! I combined my assets with some of the others to create sky versions of some of these obstacles, and I added the giant slapping hand as a new course object. <laughs> It did take me a minute to uh, get it working right, though. Then I used the new obstacles to build the course up higher. I wanted to keep this beautiful lotus flower that someone had made, so I actually made it the player's objective to reach this lotus flower and obtain it. And then I used the remainder of my time to juice things up by adding a few more sounds. Yeah, that's all I got. In a previous episode of the series, we invited Flow Studio. You guys liked these awesome devs so much that we asked whether they would like to join us again. This yes, and like last time, they could work as a team, trying to build upon the worlds the four previous devs had put together. Hey everybody, my name's Julian from Flow Studio, the creators of Lens Island. Uh, we also have our own Dev Diary series here on YouTube. So I've managed to wrangle half the team for today. And yeah, I guess we're gonna find out what we're working on. So let's go get the team. Yeah, you're get away from the team. You're not working today. Martin, your lead programmer. Alan, lead motivator. Max might make an appearance. Justin, your game designer. And then we'll have Lars in Norway working on audio. I'll just fill in the gaps. I'll do whatever needs to be. Um, step behind the camera. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh, wow, okay. We've got some real floppy arms. The eyes look like they're slightly hot. I like that a lot. <laughs> Your pond's been poisoned. Oh, right, so we're gonna go up there. Oh, Ooh, hell yeah. We're gonna retract, okay. Jump. Huh. This is a really cool idea for a game. We can definitely tighten up the controls. Oh, what the? Oh, hey, Dad. That's interesting. What's up? That's interesting. Oh, that's what is weird. Oh, oh, that is... oh what's oh. happening? Oh. All right, let's, let's go oh. get a coffee and brainstorm what we're gonna do with this. Okay, we've got an idea. We're gonna change the map to a well because we think that like really builds upon this whole frog thing. We're basically gonna keep the whole game, keep all the ideas, but we're just gonna amplify them. So there is the radioactive liquid that's dripping into this well and it's slowly filling up the well. So there's actually like a big sort of death zone that's slowly rising to create some level of, of tension. And the level is basically this giant sort of funnel that you're having to sort of go up to get out of the well.
Julian, what's up? Not much. I built a big well. We have a giant oh. cylinder. So I'm sort of just like doing really, really rough <laughs> concepting. And I'm just having a very first pass at changing the lighting and rendering and just sort of updating it, making it look a little bit nicer. I've just been working on this splat effect. Just like doing a few sprites in Photoshop and trying to make it so like when the tongue sticks to something goes like, First we needed some uh, game music, so I quickly composed some silly music I think will fit the game, being that the game is kind of silly looking and uh, funny to play. Then I changed the footsteps and tongue interaction and added some waterfall sounds to the scene. After that we needed some music for the main menu and I wanted to make something silly using a frog sound. And finally, I made a quick art layout main menu. As you're playing, like this plane of acid will like slowly keep going up and up and up. As like a bit of tension, it's a cool way to add like a timer and it will kill you, you go into it. This thing I'm trying to do here is sort of like these two uh, airships that rotate around you and shoot at you while you're trying to climb up. And I think like at the moment it's sort of like this obstacle course, like you can see other people build these little parts of levels, so we're just sort of trying to keep to that theme and add more of it. All right, that is us done. It's not our best work. I actually got braces and teeth removed halfway through the challenge. And Martin sitting behind me actually got major surgery on his arm and had to go to hospital. So we tried our best with the time that we had, although our dev team wasn't at full capacity, but uh, thanks. Very cool title menu. Wow, they kept the water idea. Go Frogman. Oh, this is scuffed. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the f- Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Guide me. Guide me, brother. Hey, it's my frog boy. He's been half buried alive. Poor man. Look at that, it's my pond. Nice. <laughs> Shit, it's rising. This is for a frog nation. I don't know what Frog Nation is. If you miss, you fall all the way back down to that irradi irradiated pond. I do like the rising water mechanic! I'm dead. Alright, it's speedrun time. You're about to see the fastest run in history of Froggy. As you can see by my soundlessness, I am very concentrated right now. I'm about to break every record. Is there even a record? I don't know. But I'm about to break it. Frog brother, I will make you proud. Oh no. Oh mother I look stupid. Oh hey. That's just me. Remember to check out the Game Dev Rockets if you also want to become a professional game developer and learn fascinating skills such as c -sharp programming, Unity game development, and game arts. There's a special launch deal with a massive 30% discount for the next 48 hours. Alright, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you real soon for some crazy Game Dev collaborations.